I've just purchased one of my absolute dream cars. This right here is a Mazda RX-7 FC Turbo 2, as you can see by the air intake there. I will be turning it from this into this. Well, the camera doesn't focus at all. But this right here is Ryosuke Takahashi's FC3S RX-7 from the Initial D anime. And because I'm a hardcore Initial D fan, obviously, I need to turn this into a one-to-one -one replica car. Now, as you can see by the amount of parts that's right behind me, there's this little problem with the car. Because see, even though it looks perfect and in mint condition from the outside, and to be fair, also on the inside, it is super clean in here. This baby really has some problems, and actually, this is gonna be a lot of work. And if you're asking yourself what the problem is, then, well, here it is. Of course it's the engine. After all, it's a rotary. Now the biggest problem apart from this engine situation is that this car has actually been sitting in a barn for 14 years. Now the good part about this is that it actually runs, and it runs decent, but this thing really needs a rebuild. As you can see, all of the belts are super brittle already. Compression is also not the best on this engine. It's right around 90 psi, which is not the worst, but also not the best. Good thing though, it runs. Now, as I mentioned before, the FC has been sitting in a barn for 14 years, which means we have a lot of maintenance ahead of us. Also, here in Germany, we have something very similar to the Japanese Shaken. This is basically an inspection that happens every two years where the car is checked for roadworthiness. And to get it ready for this inspection, we first need to sort out a few things, starting with the brakes. All right, now for brakes, I decided to go for the OEM spec brakes, because to be honest, on the Turbo 2, the brakes are actually more than enough stock. That's why I went for new brake discs front and for the rear and I also decided to get myself some brake lines. These are actually braided steel brake lines just to improve the brake feel a little bit. Obviously also I bought some new brake pads front and rear. Nothing fancy here. However, before we address the brakes, there's one more thing that I want to take a look at and that is the fuse box. See, because when I got the car, I noticed that the dash lights don't work. None of them. Now the problem is that I'm not getting, like it doesn't matter if I turn on the headlights or like start the car, I'm not getting any illumination from the tachometer as well as the AC unit. These are supposed to light up. So what I thought I would be doing is check all of the fuses first. Now the problem is that with my particular car, there is no fuse box cover as you can see down here, which creates a unique problem. And then I'm gonna see if the actual illumination on the interior, all of the dash lights, if they work. If not, I also did a bit of research and then we might actually have a problem with the dimmer switch right here which sits at the end of the headlight control thingy as you can see and um, yeah that that's gonna be really expensive so one of these costs 700 euro which is just totally out of my budget right now replacing the fuses is extremely simple and anyone can do it at home just rip out the old ones and put the new ones in it is very important however that you stick precisely to your specific fuse layout if this does not work now. I'm kind of screwed actually. Okay, nice. Wiper still doesn't work. Weirdly enough, the the windshield washer fluid thing that works. Let's test out if the lights work. They still do not work. Oh my god. If you know what could be the problem, please leave it in the comments below. But like, I, I really don't know at this point. Let's do the brakes. Hopefully we have more luck with the brakes. Also guys, if you made it this far into the video, I just want to say a big thank you. And also want to remind you that if you want to see more of this build, then please consider subscribing because I think this is going to be a super cool project. Make sure you don't miss out on that.
To replace the entire brake system, we first need to take off the wheels. Then, remove the aligning screws. Well, I mean, at least try to remove them. Oh, and this is also the point where I decided to jack up the car from the front to be able to turn the steering wheel freely. This gives me better access to the brakes. I don't know if you saw it before, I think I filmed it, but just look at these little screws down here, these Phillips head screws, these are the screws that hold them in or like basically just little alignment screws and these are so rusty I already tried to clean them, clean them off with a metal wire brush and to get them loose with like some WD-40. The screws didn't even budge so I moved on to removing the brake calipers. Just remove the pins that hold the brake pads in place, remove the springs and rip out the old brake pads. After that there are only two bolts left that hold the caliper to the car, which are usually extremely seized, and I decided to get a breaker bar. I really thought I would just strip the bolts completely, but it worked. At least for, for the first bolt it worked. Knock on wood. Hey guys, I finally managed to open the bolts on the brake discs. Well, but now we kind of have a whole nother problem actually. And this is the brake calipers. This right here, the front left brake caliper. And stock, they come with a four piston caliper, which is pretty cool. Except it's not cool if one of the calipers is completely stuck. Both of the pistons up here, they can retract fully, the one down here as well, but this one does not want to move at all. What I already tried is to use a bit of pressurized air to basically just put enough pressure into the caliper so the pistons pop out. This worked great for exactly two of the pistons. The other two pistons were completely stuck. And because the brake rotors were so rusted to the hub that I couldn't even get them off with a hammer, there was only one thing left that I could do for now. And this is to change the brake lines for the braided steel ones, which are gonna feel so much better than the stock rubber ones. Braided steel lines have a huge benefit over rubber lines. Not only are they stiffer and therefore don't expand as much as rubber lines when you hit the brakes, they also last longer from a maintenance perspective. We have just installed the braided steel brake lines. These are gonna feel so much better on the car and they look so much cooler. Um, not that you could actually see the brake lines anyways when the wheels are back on, but just they look cool. I'm just gonna put the wheels back on for now and, and continue tomorrow with the brake calipers once I got the pistons out. For now, let's just repeat the same steps on the left side, on the driver's side, and install the braided steel brake line. I thought replacing the brake system would be smooth sailing, and well, I may have been a little naive, but for me it doesn't matter, because I love this car already, and seriously, how could you not love this absolute time capsule from the 80s? Also, this just gives me the excellent opportunity to learn so much more about this car than I would have if everything went smooth. Because let's be honest, there are always going to be obstacles in your way no matter what you do, so let's just face them with a positive attitude. This right here is our old rubber brake line. I cannot really see any punctures or points where it ripped. Well. We got better ones, braided steel. It's gonna feel so awesome. Hey guys, that's it. And that's brake line numero dos. Next, I picked up my seized calipers from the mechanic and sadly they couldn't get the pistons out either. So I will probably have to order a new pair, which is a bummer, but what they could help me with, however, is the brake rotors. They gave me a special tool which should make it much easier to remove my rusty rotors. 
Now sadly, I really don't have any time left to change the brakes because actually tomorrow on the 1st of February I will be going to South Korea. So leave it in the comments below if there's anything particular that you want to see, especially about the car culture, something like that. I already made some plans for you, so don't worry. But as I said, if there's anything special that you want to see or any special place that you want me to go to, leave it in the comments below. I will also be creating a community post where you can also leave your comment. But guys, no more talking. I want to end this video on a positive note. And that said, let me tell you that I've actually fixed the cluster illumination. And the way I actually fixed it was super weird. Now, after changing all of the fuses and replacing them for new ones, it still didn't work. So I was kind of lost. So the next suspicion that I had was that it may have something to do with the dimmer switch right here. Now this could have been very expensive actually. One of these costs 700 euro, which as I said is totally out of my budget right now because there's so much stuff to do on this car and so many things to buy. I actually started disassembling the entire cluster thing around here and I couldn't find anything. But right when I just wanted to give up because I couldn't find anything, I decided to put everything back together and that's where it started working suddenly out of nowhere and I found out that it was actually just like a broken connection like a broken cable I replaced that and now everything's a mint and if you've enjoyed this video and you want to see more of this build series then make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel because there's so much more content ahead and when I come back from South Korea not only will the brakes finally be done but also I will rip out the entire engine and I'm gonna take you along through the entire process so stay tuned for that. Anyways, I hope you have a great day. See you in the next video.